Hi everybody, I'm Dr. Shiver and today I am at the Art and Music Recording Studios uh, to show you a few tricks and how I made something. My latest track released on Protocol September the 8th and featuring Casey. Are you ready? Let's start! The first thing I want to show you is how I have started to do this track. You know, a lot of people will tell you start from the lead sound, somebody else will tell you start from the bass, somebody else will tell you it's better to start from the chord progression, but what is true is that there is no rules. You should just start with the things that is inspiring you the most in that moment. So if you are inspired by, I don't know, the chord progression, just go with the chord progression. No rules in this case. Uh, in my specific case, what I've done it was starting from the lead sound, which is also the same melody that has been used for the bass, because in this track, bass and lead sound is exactly the same thing. So, this is, for example, our lead sound. And it's one of the elements, which is in the layer. So, that is the melody that is going on all over the drop, in this case, and as you can see, this is all my layer. Let's take it all together, and then let's explain it, track by track. What I've done here is trying to mix some electro sound with some really uh, unplugged elements. Like for example, this is an original bass. This is a Fender bass which has been played by one of my best bass players, Leonardo Mastronardi. Yeah. I have recorded this bass in Cubase because I've used two dough. One is Logic, as you can see, to do all the structure and the arrangement, plus Mix and Master, and the other one is Cubase. Uh, so I've recorded the bass and I've just put it inside my layer. Well, initially I haven't started with the bass because the bass player wasn't here, but I've started with some MIDI. I believe it was this one. <laughs> Which in this case is Nexus, as you can see, it's uh, XP House Volume 2 AR, AR all the humans. But what makes the difference is the plugin chain. Here you go, that's without the plugin chain. So what I've done is tweaking the old sound. What is very important and you should always remember is that today mix and master are not just uh, the final processing of your track, but it is one of the most important step of your entire production. It's something that can actually make your track different, very different, because with the plugins we have available in the market, you can do a lot of things. So let's go in detail. The first thing I've done, it's a simple EQ. This is a FabFilter Pro Q2, which to me it's a very, very, very nice uh, equalizer because you have this fantastic keyboard that helps you a lot. And this keyboard basically tells you, like, I'm just showing you, this is a point I'm putting. I know that this track, for example, is in B minor, so if I want to do a tone EQ, I will move my point to B minor. Here we go, this is B5, as you can see. And so, like, now I want to boost it. Here we go. I'm just boosting the B minor, okay? The B minor in this specific case on a thousand, about a thousand hertz. So what I've done here is cutting a little bit of bass because uh, I already have my bass sound here and doing a note here uh, because there was a resonance frequencies that I killed and that was very, 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 very easy EQ and that's the first step of this channel. Then I went into this. Well, this is UAD. Pull tech and I love it because it makes shine all of your instrument and vocal. On vocal is simply amazing. So this is with that's without. You feel how much is opening? Yeah? So this is just to give a little bit of high hand. And that's the second MIDI. That's, sorry, that's the second plugin. So still. A sausage fattener to create a little bit of distortion. Then 
This is a multi-band processor, still Pro-Q. Uh, what is nice is that it is softly killing or gaining your frequencies. So instead of destroying, it's just giving you a soft, soft touch, which can be very good in this specific case because it's not destroying your sound, but just killing softly the frequencies which are uh, invading your mix or are not working. Because what is also important to remember is that uh, when you are mixing your layer, when you have your final layer, you have to mix each channel uh, considering the other channels. So, it can happen that there are frequencies that are uh, going to crash uh, with some other instrument frequencies. So you have to choose which instrument will have that frequencies and which instrument will not have that frequencies. Because either way you will have too much of that frequencies. So this is just doing a gentle reducing of frequencies. This is without. And that's with. That's a creative filter, I will always use it, but this is just an automation to cut the sound and to open the sound. So actually in this moment is not doing anything. And least but not last, this is a transient designer. I've used this transient designer because in this specific case, the attack was too loud. And so I reduced the attack of the channel. Okay, kickstart by Nicky Romero. So it's a case and at the end this track was released on protocol. I really like this plugin by Nikki. And uh, well, I've, I've used it to do side chaining, just simple side chaining. Okay, so that's the first channel of the layer. Let's go on a second one. That's a silent. This is a total customized. Uh, I use the Vandalin's bass introduction, but then I have totally tweak it and make it absolutely different. Also here, if I switch off all of my plugins, that's how the sound. And that's with the plugins. So once again, at the bottom of the chain there is the kickstart. And here, what is very important for everybody to know, it's a little secret, which is if you're doing a layer, don't use trillion different side chain. Just use one preset. If you're using this specific wave, for example, just use this wave. Don't use thousand waves because then the track will be masked and you will not have uh, the glue effects on uh, your channels and all your instruments. What you can do is playing with the amount of side chain you're doing because maybe you want to have an instrument more present in the mix and another one less present, but never change the wave. So that was the Kickstarter and then still there is a little EQ, just simple, it is a cutting on 150 hertz. Because I really do not need the bass frequencies from this one. This is another EQ, I have re-killed again, bass frequencies on about 100 hertz. And the kill the high frequencies on 4400, because that was supposed not to work on a very high hand. Another sausage fattener, again, I'm really in love with this one. that brings a little bit of distortion. Compressor. This is the JJP Strings Key. It's a very, very nice uh, uh, plugin you can use for your bass or your, for your lead sounds to change them and to make a little bit different, okay? So, this channel, for example, it's another Nexus and there are just two plugins. One is a sausage fattener to have a little bit of distortion. And the other one is still a fat filter Pro Q2 to have a little bit of a cueing because there was this range of frequencies which really was too much. I was really liking the body of the sound, which is a very EDM sound, but the, this high hand was very, very too much invasive, so I just killed everything because if you listen to this sound without the EQ, it's too much in face, but with the EQ, goes on his place and makes his walk. Next channel is a stereo bass. This is a trillion. 
This is a preset I've made. Uh, it's just a stereo base to create a nice uh, stereo image on uh, the layer. It's very, very important to always to remember that. Uh, well, you need to have uh, sound which are mono, so are in the center, because this sound are the sound that you are uh, feeling the most. But then you need to open up your image, and to do it, you can, of course, use plugins. Uh, there are a lot of plugins, like for example, is S1 of Waves, if I remember correctly. Uh, but uh, if a sound is very mono, you can use any kind of plugin, but you will never have the real stereo feeling, okay? So if you can create your own stereo sound, it's better. In my case, I made this trillion, which has been EQ'd and, well, limited with a stupid limiter, an L1 by waves. And the Q is just boosting these frequencies on 100 hertz, because this one is working as well as a kind of mid bass. Okay, uh, the tracks I showed you now were the most uh, uh, electro into the project, except of this one, of course, the first one I show you, which is a little bit more real, it sounds still funky, but it's not really funky one, okay? Then let's go with this one, which is audio. Uh, it's very important here uh, to always consider that if you have a sound, uh, it can be a virtual instrument, an audio unit, whatever you're going to use. It can be also a real instrument. Then you can physically edit the audio. So this sound, for example, has been created in Cubase. And after creating the sound in Cubase, I've just edited and tweaked in Cubase with plugins, imported inside this project, and that's the sound, how, how it is now. And as you can see, there is just this stupid EQ to kill a little bit of resonant frequencies and this transient designer still to kill the old attack because the attack of the sound was very too much in phase, nothing else. And of course uh, our kickstart, so our side chain at the end of the channel. But what I've made then, it was trying to have some concrete some real instrument going on into the track. So the first one I've added was an Hammond. And I can also show you on Cubase how I made this Hammond. Exactly, so. What I've done here was simply recording my Hammond. Here in the studio we have an original Hammond B3 made in California in 1969 with an incredible Leslie 147. I've mixed up the Hammond with three Neumann U87. As you can see, it's three mono channels. The first one is totally panned on the left. The second one is totally panned on the right. And the third one is totally panned in the center because this one is for the bass. So let's go to listen channel by channel. So high frequencies and the super low. I've mixed them, I've rooted into a bus and I have EQ'd the bus with a filter and X noise. But then there was a trouble. This is the original layering of the track. So you can already hear the difference from the layer into the track which has been released and this original one which was very electro. If you can hear there is a big pitch band automation so it goes bam 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 but it's very easy to do pitch band automation when you have a MIDI file because you just have to draw it into the MIDI. In this specific case it's audio so what to do? Well I've just bounced the three channels into one serial channel, re-imported into the project the channel, which is this one, and, well, no, it's not here, I believe it has been made onto another, uh, oh no, it's here, sound shifter pitch stereo, it has been done here, so I've just done an automation here, which is this one, you see, on the pitch, of the Hammond. So the audio now is pitch 2 and can go together with the layer. Feel it? Okay. Once done it, I have simply exported the stereo and 
went back on logic. And that's the Hammond again. But as you can hear, this Hammond sounds still different from the Hammond of Cubase. Why? Because still, Sausage Fettner, UAD Puitek, and again, another one. You know, uh, what is very important and what I've learned during my experience is that you have to make your tracks your own. That means that you have to break the rules. But to break the rules, you should and you must know first the rules. So once you know all the rules and you should and you know that, for example, this is something I cannot do, well, you can do it anyway. If, if you have good ears, you have good speakers, and uh, you have good taste, of course, you just have to listen and, oh, this is not supposed to be done, but damn it, sounds very good, so why not to do it? Just do it, very easy. So that's what I've done also with the Hammond and the rest of the track. But let's move further. These are, you know, guitars layers because as mentioned, I was really willing to have this uh, real sound, real approach into the track. And so there is guitar layer low. And guitar layer high. Both the guitars have tons of plugins, then I will show you here and here, and goes onto a guitar drop bus which has other plugins. But what is interesting is that still this guitar were recorded like here. So I think that's the project in Cubase. I called here in the studio my dear friend Luca Marchesini, which is an incredibly sick, talented and gifted guitar player. And just say, Luca, I need this guitar. And he gave me like tons of guitars. And then at the end, I just used the guitar, which were doing same melody of the drop. And you see here, these are all guitars, all of them. For example, what is this? Is it playing? No? <laughs> Super funky. But we arrive to this later. So, well, here you have the guitar by Luca, the high one. Oh, but wait a minute. Is the same guitar? Yes, it is. But here it sounds like that because there are no plugins. And what is very important is that if I open up and I go into the grill, of Cubase, you will see that each note of guitar are perfectly on tempo. Which doesn't mean that my friend Luca Marchesini is a monster, because nobody can do it, is like physically impossible, but means that I've done a very important operation, which means I have done a manual quantization of the audio. Note by note, I have cut it. Now I'm showing you even if it's already quantized. And then simply I move back the note in place. So exactly where the note is supposed to be, to have exactly every single note tight with the grid. That's very important because we are not working with just single instrument. We are working onto a layer. So given the fact that this audio channel will work together with other MIDI files, like let's go back to Logic, with all this mess, all this mess layer, and all this bass and all the sub bass, you really need to have everything really tight, everything really synchronized. So you should really go for audio quantization. So after I've done my audio quantization, in this case, there were no plugins, no dynamics, uh, no nothing. I've just uh, done the quantization after the recording and uh, I have imported into Logic. So here we go, guitar without plugins. Oh, sorry. There are also plugins by the bus. Here we go. And then plugins. So, which plugins? Fab filter. Just a cut of bass frequencies on 340 hertz. You really don't need anything. Uh, by this guitar because it's very high. Always remember to EQ properly your channels because that can save your ass. 
if you don't uh, do a proper EQ, you will have a lot of messed up frequencies into your wall. So the best thing you can do is always try to understand, okay, what I need of this instrument, for example, which, which frequencies I need of this guitar, not the bass in this case, so kill it, why to keep them? So there's a Q, an SGR2, which is a fantastic plugin I didn't knew till a lot, long time ago. It was my friend Chapo, which showed me the first time and I really went in love with this uh, plugin because it really makes the difference. So just listen to the guitar without. I just tweaked, looked for presets and after looking for presets I have just tweaked and made in my home. Another EQ, this is killing a lot of resonant frequencies and just give a little bit of boost here, about 10k. And then an SPL transient designer again to reduce the attack. Um, that's another important thing. As you have seen in different channels, I have used this plugin uh, to reduce the attack. Why I've done it? Because the attack, the strong attack means that you are taking space away for the kick and the kick needs to have room so if the elements into your mix doesn't have that much of attack especially the layer of the lead sound and of the bass then your kick will breathe more and you will feel that the top kick okay so another sausage partner i'm really in love with this one again and still kickstarter same wave but as you can see the other channel was 73 this one is 100 percent because i was not willing to have the guitar too much in face and this is the bass of the guitar still has been acute this is just a compressor by ssl as you can see here we have the real thing which has been used in the final process but that's something we're going to discuss later but this is very good by uad but if you don't have UAD, you can find the same by Waves. Uh, another multiband by Pro, by Fat Filler, sorry. Another EQ, Resonant Frequency is killed. And Kickstart, again. But this time 68%. But as you can see, the wave is always the same. So, uh uh, wrong choice. Low, okay. That's the low layer of the guitar. And also here, no plugins. That's the guitar without any plugins. So what I've done, EQ, still, I was not, even if this guitar has very nice uh, bass frequencies, I was definitely not needing to have bass because there is a lot of, there is a bunch of bass by all the other elements of the layer. So just kill the bass here, 140 hertz, and re-kill them about 240, but not drastically, to still leave a little bit of dap to this guitar. SGR again, which makes really the difference. Okay. Pro Q2, another EQ, because you see, you, you can think, why are you cutting again if you already cut? Because the plugin SGR is boosting again the low frequencies. So we have in this particular case, you know, this frequency about 126 Hertz, which is really annoying. Let's kill it. And also this part, we don't need it. Why we don't need it, this 2000 Hertz? Because we already have them by the other layer of guitar. So why to mess up things? Let's keep it clean. And at the end, again, the low layer, the sorry, the SPL transit designer to kill a little bit of a pack. Yeah. And the kick side. Very good. So this is how the entire lead sound has been done, track by track. But what is most important is this, which is the bus, because all the channel has been driven to a general bus. So all the channel till here to this bus. These two guitars has been driven to the guitar drop bus, which bus has been redriven to the lead bus. So on this bus, as you can see, well, this is not used, we can remove it. Also, this one has not been used, so we can remove it. We have a ton of plugins. If I remove them all, you ready? Let's go. That's the layer without anything.
So you see, that's just to show you how much is important to use plugin properly because plugin can make your track another track. You can be very creative with plugin. You can be very creative with mix and master if you know what you're doing and if you know where you want to go. Uh, it's very important also if you are at the beginning of your process or if you're not having that much of experience, having references. So, uh, well, you can take a track to say, okay, this track is very nice for the structure. Let's put it there. This track is very nice for, I don't know, um, mood. This track is very nice for lead sound. The sound is very nice for effects. And then you can use them to compare your track with other tracks. But that's something I advise you to do till you have to learn. Once you are arrived to the point where you're really able to do what is in your mind, so to put your ideas onto your dough, then just stop to use references. You can use references maybe just to, I don't know, uh, compare the master impression, just to see if you achieved to arrive to the standard, the standard that the, the musical industry requires. But this is it, because the risk when you have in references is always to uh, copy something which already exists. And given to the fact that today there are about 3,000 tracks released per week, which is an impressive number, if you really want to have a concrete chance, you have to make it your own. So, let's see this huge layer. Sausage Fetner, once again. Pro-Q, once again. Little bit of killing here and little bit of boosting there. And this killing has been done to give more room still to the kick. C4, because I was needing to control a few frequencies. This is multi-band. Uh, other EQ after the C4. A multi-band EQ. A pull tech again to boost a little bit on 10k. The creative filter is just for the automation, as you can see. Now I will cut here. The other one is the opposite. So the first one I played you is killing the high frequencies, while well, this one is killing the bass frequencies. And then there are just stupid EQ and other creative filters to do other effects. And this reverb, this is a reverb as you can see is zero. This has been used just and exclusively to create effects, to do automation. Not to give a real reverb to your bus, because it's very, very wrong to put reverb here and it's better to use Send. So no insert, always use send for your reverb and delays. There are a few occasions where maybe to create something brand new, you can try to put the reverb onto your insert, but in that case you can do it only and exclusively if you're very aware of the fact that is very wrong and that you're doing that just to try to achieve a better result. So now we have seen the entire layer, let's move and see what I've made for the bass and the sub bass. The sub bass is this one. And what I've done is just using a fantastic micro Korg that we have here in a studio. Uh, well, I've just drived a MIDI file from the computer to the Korg, and then the audio output of the Korg was passed through the SSL and recorded. There is this EQ because we really don't need these frequencies about 181 hertz because it's not a nice frequencies for this specific instrument, of course, and also because there is this mid bass which is doing that frequency. But then I've made this LFO with this important thing. This important thing is a trick that my friend John Christian showed me a long time ago and saved my ass in different occasions. Uh, the trick is simply uh, create this. You see this little room? This little space is for the kick attack. So the kick is always free and given to the fact that the bass and the sub bass are the instrument which are more invading the same range of frequencies where the kick is hitting, then you create that little space to give room to the kick to hit and punch in your face. The second one is once again the sidechain. In this case, as you see, I have changed the wave. So 
is not the same wave of uh, the entire layer because this sub specific sub base was too much, in, in too much big. So I've just uh, reduced a little bit uh, his power with a bigger wave. Okay. There is then a mid bass. See, it has been cut here on 50 hertz because we already have them from the other uh, sub bass and uh, has been high cut in here because we really do not need these frequencies given to the fact this has just to do mid bass. Again, the LFO to give space to the kick. And now it's the original. Uh, LFO, uh, sorry, the original side chain wave that has been used in, in the entire layer. Uh, this track was a big, big challenge for me because it's a B minor and B minor is one of the worst key uh, on earth to have sub bass. So what you should know is that, uh, I show you on a keyboard quickly, uh, you have a range of note that goes from E to A so it's E, F, F sharp, G, G sharp, and A, which are very rich of sub frequencies. That means that if your track is in one of these keys, uh, you actually can use your bass as a sub. But for all the other keys, like C, C sharp, D, D sharp, and B, B flat, uh, you don't have that much of sub frequencies into your bass. So what to do in the case, I show you. As mentioned, you have two elements which are giving you bass and sub bass. One is the kick, the other one is the sub bass. So if the sub bass doesn't have that much of information on the sub frequencies that you need, you can add them using your kick. So a longer kick, for example, can help you. This is my kick, which still is a layer. It's a top kick. Simple EQ and a low kick. They both go into a bus channel. With another EQ. As you can see, there is on 48 Hertz a boost of plus 2 dB because I was really needing to have that sub frequencies, so that's the way of how I realized it. And as you can see at the same time here on 143 Hertz, I have killed a few frequencies because this frequencies was already used by our bass. So that's how I made the kick. This is also the groove. So this is snare layering made by snare clap and clap. All channels has their dedicated EQ and plugin, and all of them goes into a bus because if you are doing a layer, whatever it is, if it is drums, if it is, uh, I don't know, lead bass, whatever, you should drive each channel of your layer into a bus and then equalize the bus. That's the only way to uh, lose the effect of having different instruments, but having the effects of having just one instrument or one snare sound in this specific case. In this case, I just use a linear multiband to compress these frequencies and uh, boost them up and kill these other two frequencies. So till uh, 1K almost, which I really do not need to have. Let's see now how I realized the drums. Kick, snare. Very, very simple groove that then has been reinforced. I don't know if you can say that in English with other grooves and other instruments. What is important is that also here I've tried to understand which frequencies. Uh, were occupied and busy by, were taken by other instruments and which frequencies were still free. So I've tried to create a good balance to have everything sounding uh, together and, uh, you know, 
to be able to read, even if you're not reading but you're hearing, but to read each singular channel. So when you're closing your eyes, you should listen every channel of your track, you know, every single channel. Uh, if it's a layer, of course, you should just listen the entire layer. But if there are different things like drums, uh, uh, like lead sound, etc., etc., then you should just read them. So, drums, here we go. Plus our lead sound, mid, bass, and sub bass. And as you can see, if I remove this extra drums I've put here, there is less room, of course. It's very important to, uh, you know, add, <coughs> sorry, to add elements uh, while the track is built because this is not traditional music, it is not pop where you have the entire orchestra or you have your band with your singer so that there are instruments goes, that goes in, instrument that goes out, you have melodies that changes. Mostly of the time when you do this kind of music, you have a loop. You have a melody which is repeated a lot of times, so to make the whole thing more interesting, you have to work with, I don't know, feels for example, effects, uh, stops, uh, drums with adding elements and so on. And that's the reason why this elements has been added. This sorry, this grooves has been added. But not just this groove has been added. Also this new guitar. Which is the funky guitar I was showing you in Cubase before. Is this one? If I can find it. I think it's this one. Yep. Also, this guitar has been pre-recorded with Luca, and well, after the recording, I've just quantized the entire guitar and re-imported it into, like, audio quantized, as I explained before, and re-imported it into Logic here. And this guitar is like that now, with all the plugins. <laughs> But if I remove the plugins once again, so the first one is just a Pro Q2, kill in the bass, a little bit of reverb, which in this case and has been used here into the insert to give a little bit more depth and to uh, and to give a little bit of softness to the to the guitar because if you add to any instrument a reverb into the insert instead of adding your um, reverb into the sand you are somehow making that sound a little bit softer so that's the reason why this reverb has been used here another EQ still the pull tech which I love and a creative filter, but this is just for effects and automation. And at the end, of course, the kickstart. So that's the entire drop. Let's take the drums again in solo. This is enough filter, so this is an effects. Here we go. With the guitar, sounds like that. And still, the reason why I've added this guitar is, well, in this case, it's double. The first reason is uh, to, well, less, let the, the drop be less uh, loopy. So, make a new instrument going in is just giving a little bit of fresh uh, new to the drop, make the whole thing more interesting. And the second thing is still to make the entire track even more concrete, even more played, even more real, yeah? To make this concept of having real elements in the track, that's my second trick, which I've made it this tabs, 
One, two, and three. As you can hear, these are AU, so audio unit. In this case, I've used a keyscape. This is a road piano. Yeah, yeah it's a road. Then I've used the. It's still a road. No, no, this is a piano. Sorry, this is a Nexus piano, but an octave downer to give a little bit of body. And this is another piano, very, very deep, to give even more body. At the end, the sound was convincing me, but still I was looking for something even more concrete, even more real. So I have recorded still on Cubase, real brass. These are real brass recorded here. To be more precise, is three brass, is one trumpet, one trombone, one saxophone and all of the instrument has been doubled itself, so there are two, trump two trumpets, uh, two trombones and two saxophones. Then I've done mixing in Cubase. I have bounced them all into series channel and I've imported here. And of course, least but not last, all of these tabs and this press has been driven again, routed again to a bus, which has been queued and plugged in. So this is without anything, and this is with all the effects. Multi-band compressor, EQ, little bit of reverb, and again reverb. This is an automation reverb, which is zero. So in some part of the track there is just this mix going on to create more effect, deepness, uh, and give something, you know, fresh still to uh, make the drop more interesting. But this one still has been placed here for the same reason of the other channel, which is make the sound a little bit softer. And that's the result with the stops.